A man in a wheelchair. Word circle. Planet. A man with a guide dog. Try it. A woman answers a phone. Do it. Words appear. It's your career. Graduates in black gowns smile and wave diplomas. It's that moment you've been waiting for when all those years of college will start to pay off. At least they will for some people. I think there's a myth that if you have a college degree, you've got a job no matter what, and that's not accurate. About 20% of college graduates are underemployed. And the reason is partly because while they're in college, they really don't start preparing for the job search. Jean Hernandez, Career Center, on a campus. You need a career-seeking strategy and a little experience. Otherwise, you're likely to be just another face in the crowd, another resume in a stack of hundreds. And that's true for anyone with or without a disability. Deborah Angel. The academics alone are not enough. Warehouser company. You really should think about an internship or a cooperative education experience. Internships and cooperative education experiences offer work-based learning opportunities. They're arranged between schools, employers, and students. They may involve academic credit, and sometimes they're even paid. The sooner you start checking these out, the better. Brent Hernandez. The biggest thing I would say is start early because I started my sophomore year and I think that was prime time to start. Brent is a success story. While in college, he found a program that places students in business and engineering internships. Between that program and his own skills, he was accepted for two internships at Primex Aerospace. He liked the company right from the start and those internships helped him clearly define his career plans. I knew at the end of my first internship which areas I didn't want to go into, which is just as helpful as what you do want to possibly do. So like weeded out the ones I didn't want to do. I didn't want to do electrical engineering and that kind of stuff. It just bored me. So I was like, all right, I've narrowed down the focus because I know what I don't want to do. And so I went back. These are the kind of jobs I want to do. And they said, all right, we'll try and set you up. Attitude and talent paid off. When Brent graduated, there was a job waiting for him at Primex. John Conroy. When Brent came in through his internship here um, into the quality department, uh, found that he could do the job, you know, and excel in his job. And so we basically knew when he was going back to college um, for his last few semesters that um, we wanted to make sure that uh, we brought him back because we needed that uh, expertise that he brought in. If you have the internship with the company and they know your work style and they want you to keep coming back for your second, third internship, it's totally cake. It's very easy to get in and it works really well. In a computer lab. While not every internship will lead to a job offer, there are other benefits as well. For example, there can be a lot of self-discovery. I'd say it's typical that most students don't know what they're actually going to be doing in the workplace and probably even more important, don't understand what motivates them and what doesn't. And doing a co-op or an internship is a low-risk way to discover what do you like to do before you're actually out in the workplace. You can discover that in three to six months instead of the 18 to 24 months of a typical first job. It can also be the first step on the road to independence, especially if the internship is out of town. Minda Dentler. I think it was a good stepping stone to make me realize what it's like to work in the business world. College student. And also just to live on my own. I lived on my own this whole summer, so it's good for that. You'll also learn that you have to bring something to the company. Randy Hammer. Especially in information technology, they're looking for someone that's going to come out and be a quote unquote fast burner. Hi, TS Hope. This is Randy. They're going to want somebody that's going to, you know, be going to get the, you know, the, the job done and wanting to learn from the internship. Um, they can't have somebody just come in and kind of sit there all day. Hey, Randy. You have to treat an internship just as you would a real job. Develop a confident and cooperative attitude. You have to work with your coworkers. No person works alone and you always have to work with the team, um, especially in this day and age. A lot of people coming out of co college are very cocky about their position. I'm new, I'm fresh, I know all this stuff. And that's what hurts a lot of people. You've got to realize that you are still learning. Randy became involved in an information technology cooperative education program at Warehouser Company. As with most companies, they expected more than just basic skills. Technical capability is important, but it's maybe 15% of what makes a successful contributor. 
So what I'll do is I'll have a technician come and uh, fix those pens for you. Communication skills, interpersonal right. skills, self-motivation right. and initiative are some key attributes that we look for. We also are looking for a high level of integrity because that's very important to us at Warehouser Company. Randy helped people with computer problems. And since he's blind, he had to learn how to interface his own adaptive technology with other systems. Every place you go to is going to be using different stuff. And so you're always going to have to make a little accommodation. But every time you go to a new spot, um, I take the same adapt or adaptive equipment with me. And so I learn a few more tricks about it and, you know, in adapting to the new situation. Um, which, whenever I go to the next place, um, I'll be able to you know, apply those skills that I learned in just using the software that I'm using and the hardware. And there was another accommodation Randy had to make, one that was completely unexpected. His supervisor turned out to be allergic to his guide dog. So I had to make some accommodations for her, in fact. The things like heavy grooming, um, using special powders or, or salves to keep down whatever it is that causes um, dog allergies. It's kind of interesting, I've never had to actually make an accommodation for another person before and it's, well, besides other disabled people, so it's kind of interesting to have to work with her. Work-based learning gives you a chance to practice those communication skills. Randy scratches his dog's head. A man walks with crutches. Employers need to work with you on accommodations, but they can't read your mind and they may sometimes be uncomfortable about what to ask or do. You need to become an expert on what works and doesn't work for you. Learn to articulate your needs clearly. You're paving the way for other people too, you know, because uh, employers are as, as much um, interested in what they need to do to, to make sure that their, their workplace is accessible. And the only way that they can really truly understand what the needs are is when they have people that are interns and such like that, that they can come in and have to deal with a few um, physical barriers that have to be removed. Besides internships or cooperative education programs, there are other opportunities for work-based learning. Job shadowing allows you to visit a business and observe people at work. It's a good way to start narrowing your career goals. There would be someone here 24 hours a day. Right, your name. Service learning is volunteer work, allowing you to use your skills while making a contribution to your community. You may even be able to arrange academic credit. In the computer lab, you want to go into the internet folder. A faculty member can help you develop an independent study project. This could be career research, or it might be a paid job in your field, which you discover on your own. And while you're doing any of these things, you'll be gaining valuable experience in writing resumes and cover letters, as well as practicing your interview skills. And that is vital for your job hunt. The job search, on the average, will take a student six to nine months to complete getting you know, your, your research done on the companies, uh, getting your materials in order, your resume, practicing your interviewing skills, sending out those resumes, actually getting an offer is a very long, tedious process. It really is competitive out there. Uh, it really involves being prepared by practicing you know, your own interview skills, uh, knowing how you're going to present yourself, things of that sort that are real important. In a bathroom, a woman sets a shopping bag by the sink. In her other hand are clothes on hangers. Besides content, you have to think packaging. She removes a sweatshirt and buttons a burgundy blouse. She buckles a low-heeled shoe. When you go to an interview, leave that casual campus look behind. A professional image is absolutely required, no matter where you're applying. Take out the nose and eyebrow rings and let your resume and personality speak louder than your clothing. Informational interviews will help you gain job information, interview experience, and networking opportunities. It's also a good time to practice disclosing your disability and discussing accommodations. There are jobs out there. Uh, the best way to find out about them, I think, is through networking and informational interviews. That's something that students can and often find people are willing to talk to them while they're in school and tell them about how they got into their jobs. But once they graduate, employers are, are less likely to take the time and help them out. Another resource is the Career Center or Career Services Office on campus. They'll have information on employers and current job openings. There may also be job fairs, workshops, or counselors available to help okay, with career planning and job searching. Make some calls. Go do it. You just have a go-getter attitude and somebody will eventually see that and they will um, bring you on. The circling words. 
To get started, you could use the CAREERS acronym developed by the DEWITT Center at the University of Washington. Words appear. C is for CAREERS. Think about what interests you. Be imaginative, then narrow it down. A is for academics. Determine the academic program best suited to your career goals. R is for research. Check out careers that spark your interests, maximize your strengths, and minimize your weaknesses. EE is for experiential education. Practice job search skills, apply for internships, ask for informational interviews, and try other work-based learning opportunities. RS is for relevant skills. Use on-the-job experiences to learn these real-world skills. Apply what you've learned in school to the workplace and test what accommodations work best for you. So, long before commencement looms, get going on some real-world experiences. Start doing everything you can now to make yourself attractive to future employers. The resources are available. You have to make use of them. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of people competing for jobs. But it helps because I know some of the stuff. Um, I've got some of the experience. I've worked with some of the gurus and masters, and I've learned from them. And you can do it too. Graduates turn their tassels. Words appear. For more information, contact Do It. On the web, www.uw.edu slash doit. Phone, voice, or TTY, area code 206 685 DOIT. Address Do It. University of Washington, Box 354842, Seattle, Washington. 98195-4842 Director Cheryl Bergstaller PhD The creation of this video was made possible by a grant from the US Department of Education The University of Washington also contributed resources to this project Copyright 2011 and 1997 University of Washington